What's going on there folks? Good evening, Earthmaster here, jumping in on this beautiful Monday evening, July 5th, 2021. Uh, about uh, 8, 11 p.m. West Coast time on the uh, two year anniversary of the 7.1 magnitude quake that struck around the Ridgecrest area. Latest quake on the globe up in Alaska. Quite a bit of earthquake movement in clusters along the uh, Pacific area, Pacific Plate into the subduction zone, seeing some deeper movement in there as well. Let's go ahead and jump over to what's going on out there in Hawaii. A little bit of activity ramping up around the big island, including a fairly moderate size 5.2 earthquake at 26 kilometers below the surface. Of course, Hawaii, right? All volcanic. So not uncommon to see these earthquakes but uh, we just don't see them all that often. In fact, if you look at the, uh, over the last, oh, 100, what is it, 100 and something years? Let's see what the key is, since about 1900 to 2015 anyway. This is 4.5 and above magnitudes uh, where this 5.2 struck today, not a whole lot. Looks like maybe over here to the west uh, by a few miles, but within this vicinity, not a whole lot of movement um, historically, but that does not mean uh, that anything major is going on just a little bit of adjustment uh, at a fairly deep level so we'll have to keep an eye on it uh, deep movement can adjust and can um, modify some volcanic activity around the island i believe there's actually a lot of plate movement uh, uh, taking place in the pacific on the pacific plate right now look at the western northwestern southwestern all very quiet look at japan down through the Indonesia area, Fiji, New Zealand. That's very eerie and odd, very quiet. So earthquake activity seems to be, at least right now, over here along the West Coast, North American plate, Pacific plate over here around the um, Alaska, Alaska region. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Southern California map. This is the uh, two point, or actually this is the all magnitudes map. Seen a little bit of increase in earthquake activity around the Ridgecrest area of all places on the two year anniversary of the 7.1 magnitude quake that shook things up out there in the desert. I was just down there a few months ago checking some stuff out. It wasn't very interesting. It's pretty uh, kind of kind of boring down there out there in the desert. But unless you know what you're looking at when it comes to the plate dynamics and all the uh, the fault systems out there, then it becomes rather cool to check out. So 3.6. Shaking things up around the Ridgecrest area at 5.9 kilometers expected right right about the level where we expect earthquakes to happen for this depth of a of a, of a quake right there. Some movement also on the Garlock Fault or just off of it. A little 2.1 near Mojave. 5.7 kilometers. Uh, movement around the Mammoth Lakes area, pretty quiet up here, Long Valley Super Volcano, not a whole lot going on. No swarming around the Southern California area. Just some oddball earthquake activity, Ridgecrest area, um, and a little, little swarming taking, out, taking uh, place here outside of the Geyser area, um, up here around Lake Berryessa. This here is a coastal ranges, part of the coastal range. Uh, I'm not for sure exactly what's up there. I've been, eh, I think I've been up to that lake one time in my life. St. Helena area, uh, Napa to the south, Calistoga over here to the west, about 15 miles or so. Um, but just some microquake activity taking place on a, I don't see any specific fault structures out there. Not saying there isn't any, but uh, you know, it could be, it could be possibly this Green Valley fault area that may extend up here. I don't know. But the USGS fault or the uh, USGS is not showing it here on their fault maps. Uh, let's go into the Pacific Northwest where it's still very quiet. Yellowstone National Park. I mean, this is the all magnitudes map here. It's just weird. It's just really weird to where Hawaii has like the most earthquake activity with the largest magnitude. That's just kind of strange. Movement into the uh, subduction zones, subduction zone. Pacific Plate, subduction zone there. A lot of deep earthquake activity taking place inland, down dip, downstream of that region. Uh, quite a bit of deep earthquake activity. 
Uh, and far as this region, I mean, it's just quiet, folks. Very quiet. I think something's brewing for sure um, here along the West Coast. I keep saying that, but man, it's just some strange movement. Um, what else we got here, folks? Not a whole lot going on, okay? So we just got to move on. There is some earthquake activity in Yellowstone National Park once again. You can see this showing up on the northwest corner of the park. Seems as though, I don't know why, but it seems like I don't think there's any specific trend to this, but it seems like it's been happening happening daily for a couple hours. We see like a heightened increase in earthquake activity showing up around the northwest corner of the park. Uh, this time it looks as though it may be a little bit more to the east. You can see that movement around Upper Falls, Norris Junction uh, region, even Mary Lake picking up on some of this seismic activity. Here's a little bit more defined on the spikes showing the signature of those quakes. Nothing being reported from the USGS as far as any earthquake activity goes, uh, but that's okay. I mean, sometimes it happens. They'll get around to it when they get around to it. Trimmer map is relatively quiet tonight. Uh, not the legacy. Let's go ahead and go over here to the uh, current map. Just little eight epicenters of trimmer right there in the, uh, well, under. Roseburg area, down dip downstream of the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Pretty quiet there, folks. All right, I'm going to jump off here. Um, I do have my nephew here, so kind of I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's allowed me to go this far. So we're going to hang out, watch some TV, and uh, probably have some shrimp for dinner. This little kid likes shrimp. He loves it, actually. Loves oysters. Um, just all that stuff is good for you too so I'm glad he likes it be on guard folks um, what do we got over here towards the east Oklahoma's seen some action and some movement around the new Madrid fault area I kind of wonder about this region here of the new Madrid fault area uh, seismically speaking you know it's been quite a while since they've seen a significant earthquake out here um, I'm trying to think when the exact date was for the uh, New Madrid fault zone quake I think it was 18 uh, 11 1812 that's right 1811 1812 this area right here seen a, a series of very large earthquakes ranging from uh, about 7.2 to 8.2 magnitude uh, back on December 16th there so it was pretty uh some pretty significant earthquake activity in this region that's why it's red there's a reason why it's in the seismically red hazard zone right there um i can't say that you know we're going to see a big quake here anytime soon but you know i'm sure stuff has been building up here at 1811 to today's date it's a little bit of uh, time right today only a small little 1.7 within that vicinity of the arkansas tennessee Mississippi, Missouri, Kentucky, Illinois area. This whole area right here, highly populated and in a very dangerous location when it comes to major earthquakes. So when just, you know, I just like to think about what all this earthquake activity has done to this region, you know, has has stress continued to build up in here? I don't know. I'm gonna, I might have to look into that, see what their uh, GPS uh, systems have recorded over the past, you know, hundred and something years since those earthquakes struck out there. Uh, I may do that on a night where I have more time to uh, study that. But for now, folks, stay safe out there on the West Coast. Happy, uh, well, shouldn't say happy. I should say, uh, you know, two year anniversary of that 7.1 in Ridgecrest. And shaking things up a little tonight down there with a 3.6. Stay safe out there, folks, and um, hope everyone has a good night. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.